Welcome to Subtracting Integers. The goals of this video will be to subtract integers using algebra tiles and also to subtract integers using basic rules. For any real numbers, including integers a and b, a minus positive b is equal to a plus a negative b, and a minus a negative b is equal to a plus positive b. In general, this rule states that we can convert every subtraction problem to an addition problem. We can then follow the rules for adding integers. I'd like to start by taking a look at why we are allowed to convert subtraction problems to addition problems. Why is subtracting a positive b the same as adding a negative b? And why is subtracting a negative b the same as adding a positive b? So let's start by looking at this problem. Is 5 minus 2 really equal to 5 plus a negative 2? And to illustrate this, I'm going to use algebra tiles. And here's the setup. One blue square is equal to 1 or $1. And one red square is equal to negative 1 or negative $1. So together, a positive 1 and a negative 1 combine to equal 0 or $0. So if we take a look at 5 minus 2, this is the model for positive 5 or $5. And of course, subtraction is like takeaway. So if I take away two of these, positive dollars, it's very easy to see that what remains is 3. 5 minus 2 is obviously 3. But instead of subtracting positive 2, what if we add negative 2? Well, here's our model for positive 5. Here's our model for negative 2. Now adding is like combining, so if we combine all of these together, we know that a positive one dollar and negative one dollar, that would give us zero. Here's another positive one dollar and a negative one dollar, and that would give us zero. So again, what remains, as we see here, we have three dollars or positive three. Five plus negative two also gives us the result of three dollars. Let's take a look at another one. Is negative three minus negative five equal to negative three plus five? So is subtracting a negative 5 the same as adding positive 5? Let's take a look. Now this example is a little more involved. Here's our model for negative 3. Well, if I have negative 3, I can't take away 5 red squares because I only have 3 of them. So what we have to do is introduce some zeros. This is what I mean by that. This is still negative 3. But over here we have a red square and a blue square, which we said was equal to zero. So these two would give us zero. These two would equal zero. So essentially these four squares represent a zero. Now the reason we want to introduce these is now we, we can take away five red squares. We can take away one, two, three, four, five. This is like subtracting the negative five. And what remains is our answer, and we have positive two. Negative 3 minus negative 5 is positive 2. Now is subtracting negative 5 the same as adding 5? Here's our model for negative 3. Here's our model for positive 5. If we add these or combine them, we know this pair would be 0, this pair would equal 0, and this pair would equal 0. And as a result, the remaining squares, two blue squares, gives us positive 2. So we are allowed to convert every subtraction problem to an addition problem. Let's take a look at some additional examples. And when we go over these examples, I am going to go back to the money analogy. So our first step will be to rewrite these subtraction problems as addition problems, and then just follow the rules of adding integers. So 5 minus a positive 7. Subtracting a positive 7 is the same as adding a negative 7. Going back to our money analogy from the video adding integers, this positive 5 represents $5 that you have plus a negative $7 or a loss of $7. So we have $5, we lose $7, we are now down $2, negative 2. This next problem, a 12 minus negative 4 would be the same as 12 
instead of subtracting negative 4, we'll add the opposite. Well, the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. Of course, this will be equal to 16. Hopefully that makes sense. If you take away a loss, that would be like giving you $4 or adding $4. Negative 5 minus 9 is the same as negative 5. Instead of subtracting a positive, we're going to add a negative 9. So we have a loss of $5 plus another loss of $9. We'd have a total loss of $14, so our sum would be negative 14. Again, this should make sense. If I take away $9, that would be the same as adding a loss of $9. And lastly, we know that subtracting a loss would really be the same as giving us $4. So minus a negative 4 becomes plus positive 4. We have a loss of $7. We gain $4. We're still down $3. Let's take a look at a couple more challenging problems. Once you rewrite these as addition problems, we are just following the rules for adding integers. Now you may ask, do I always have to convert these to addition problems? If you do enough of these problems, you probably won't rewrite these as addition problems. You will just be able to visualize them in your head. But let's go ahead and continue our work. Negative 85 minus a negative 25. So we're down $85. And if someone takes away a loss, that would be the same as adding 25. Now this one's going to be a little more challenging to figure out. We have a loss of 85 and then we gain 25. It makes sense that our answer should still be negative. And the rules for adding integers states if we're adding two integers with different signs, we take the absolute value of both. So we'd have 85 and 25. And we subtract the smaller from the larger. Of course, that would be 60. Again, we already determined our answer had to be negative. So we have negative 60. This last problem is a prime example of where it may not benefit us to rewrite this as an addition problem. We all know how to perform 121 minus 63. We know our answer will be 58. Of course, it wouldn't be wrong to keep it consistent and rewrite this as 121. Subtracting $63 is the same as adding a loss of $63 or adding a negative 63. Again, if we follow the rules for adding signed integers, of course we would still get 58. Okay, I hope that helps explain or review how to subtract integers. Thank you for watching and have a good day.